Hey everyone, I'm here with Eric Efros, the CEO of the Eva Scrivo Artists. Did I say that right? That's right. It is the agency division of our company. And Eric has negotiated many contracts for dozens of times, not only for Eva, but many of the staff members who have gone on to become brand ambassadors, or what do we call this actually, the, a brand spokesperson. And we were talking earlier about, about some of the pitfalls that artists can run into if they don't have someone representing. And he's boiled it down to five for us, and we're going to put the bigger article up online so that you can get more detail. But tell us the, the key things, the five key things that an artist should be aware of when looking at a contract. Sure. Well, the number one thing is to stay true to yourself. And you have to remember, just as you're representing a brand, a brand is representing you. So consistency is important. So in other words, if it's an edgy brand, you should only, if you're an edgy person or you do edgy work, you should go to an edgy company. Exactly. Exactly. You have to be believable. You know, so if your style is alternative and edgy and you're representing a very classic brand, you know, maybe it's not the best fit. And vice versa, if you're a colorist, don't represent necessarily a, a tool company if, if you're strictly doing color. Exactly, exactly. Okay, all right. So that's, we have a lot of detail in the article, which we're, you'll, you'll see when we put this up. All right, so number two. Uh, number two would be to, um, when it comes to negotiating the actual contracts, you have to understand your leverage, number one, and um, uh, have somebody negotiate on your behalf. Uh, so if uh, you're just starting out and this is your first gig, uh, you are not necessarily going to command a six-figure annual pay, you know, but maybe shoot for something in the mid-five figures. And also uh, focus on the daily rate, not just on your top-line pay, because that's all, often what you have to, left to negotiate with, is how many days you give the company rather than how much they're willing to commit to you. On the flip side, you also don't want to get locked in at a very small amount because you're signing a contract and once you do that you can't represent another company so you may be losing out on another opportunity that can come to you down the road for you know a very small amount of money like you know ten or twenty thousand uh, dollars so essentially you know make sure it's worth your while uh, but don't overshoot either and then when it comes to uh, representation, you know, it's a highly charged and emotional process and having a professional negotiate on your behalf uh, not only will help you to get a better package altogether, but will also help to avoid uh, hard feelings once you actually start working with a brand. Now, you are not a lawyer, but you're a business school grad and that's why you've been able to to work out so many of these things, and, and you've learned from mistakes that you've made, right? Right, exactly, and, and in the beginning, you know, when I started negotiating Eva's contracts with her, we, we used lawyers. Uh, down the road, I started using those same templates, uh, you know, for the subsequent contracts, and getting them maybe uh, reviewed less and less, uh, but yeah, I mean, my background is in, in business. I have an MBA. I spent uh, many years in the corporate world prior to starting this company with Eva. Uh, so, you know, and certainly I've learned from my mistakes along the way as well. All right, so here's a tough question. A hairdresser who's never had a contract and she's been working in a salon for five years and she's fabulous. What should her day rate be? A New York salon, what should her day rate be? I know we didn't talk about this, so I'm kind of stumping him, but what would be a good day rate? Typically, if you can get over a thousand per day, you know you're you're doing pretty well. If you can get to two thousand per day, I would say you're you're doing uh, very well. But if you're brand new, maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred a day is is decent. Okay, and then that would be four days a month, or well, typically uh, you commit to a certain number of days per year, uh, which is you know the other thing uh, to uh, think about in the contract is, you know, are you giving them, let's say, 50 days for $50,000, or are you giving them 25 days for $50,000? Uh, so they can then use those days throughout the year as they see fit. They typically have to give you uh, some kind of a, a notice when they need you to travel or do a job for them. Uh, but, you know, typically just spread out uh, during the course of the year, and they, you know, try to get as much advance notice for your jobs as well, so they don't tell you, you know, tomorrow we need you to be on a plane uh, to go somewhere and you have a book full of clients. Oh, you have such great ideas. And what about is a one-year contract, a three-year contract? What is industry standard and what is best for the artist? Well, the industry standard is to start with a one-year contract. What um, companies 
try to do as much as possible is to have um, uh, renewal options. Uh, but the options are theirs, not yours. So what that allows them to do is to manage their risk because especially when they're first starting off with you and they don't really know how you're going to be to work with, uh, how um, effective you're going to be at your job, it allows them to get out of the agreement after a year or if they do like the job that you're doing, they can continue. But uh, often what happens is if you get locked in at a, at a bargain rate for them, they can continue with you year after year for as long as they have these renewal options at these lower rates. So as, uh, as the brand ambassador, you want to try not to get locked in for too long and maybe limit their renewal options for one to no more than two years. Okay, so what are we up to? Are we up to three? We've merged a whole bunch of these. Uh, well, the, the travel clause is important. You know, it's something that um, many overlook um, you know, because they, they're just thinking of the work they're going to be doing without realizing that the job uh, typically requires a lot of travel. And while whether you're on stage or whether you're in an airport or on a plane, you can't be working and making money any other way. So you should be compensated for that time. Typically, it's about 50% of your normal rate for a travel day. So somebody who is getting $1,000 a day, they should be getting $500 for the travel day. Exactly. Or um, maybe for a full travel day, they use up half of their contract day. Okay, great. And then what about hotels? Anything you should, you should maybe consider that in the travel clause that you're not getting stuck at a Motel 6 with four other people. Not that there's anything wrong with the Motel 6, but that you maybe have your own room. I mean, something to think about, something that's important to you. Yes, of course. And most, most companies are not going to put you in some dump. But that is certainly something to look at, you know, so maybe uh, you want to be put at at least, uh, you know, a four-star hotel, you know, for example. Uh, but uh, it's certainly something to, to address. Uh, but again, if you're working with a reputable company, they typically, you know, they don't stick you, you know, in the, some dumpy hotel. Not that Motel 6 is a dump. Okay, what are we up to? Number four? Uh, we're up to, uh, well, actually, number five okay. is uh, uh, not to become a brand prisoner, which is, well, actually what, what, we, what we've addressed, but also to protect your name and your rights. Uh, because once, once you sign a contract, typically... The contract is for marketing, public relations, maybe product development purposes where you assist the brand with trying new products they want to come out with and so on and giving your feedback. But when it comes to, um, let's say, conventional advertising where you'll be on a TV ad or in a print ad, that's usually worth more money just as being having your name and likeness on product packaging is worth a lot more as well. So it doesn't mean that um, you're saying you're not interested in these opportunities. But if the opportunity should come along, it's worth a new negotiation uh, because that usually commands a premium. Well, this is so in-depth, and I know that you don't necessarily go out and get jobs for people outside of, of your artists, but you will negotiate for someone who already, if you've already been offered a contract and you want Eric to look at it, you will look at it. I think he takes 30%, but that's worth it. And how would someone get in touch with you? Uh, they can go to our website, uh, evascrivo.com, and uh, just uh, click on our uh, main email link, which is info, I-N-F-O, at evascrivo.com, and that goes right to me. Yeah, and, and you know, you've, you've learned a lot from um, the good contracts and the bad contracts, and it's, it's worth it for any artist to have as many people look over these contracts as possible. And congratulations, great success you've had with, with your own company. You know, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody.